Africa has the second fastest growing urban population in the world, and less than a third of Africans have electricity. Access to clean, safe, affordable energy is a cornerstone of the Sustainable Development Goals, and yet we are moving further away from achieving it each day. Cities often view informal settlements or slums in a negative light. Words like illegal are used to describe them, and words like eradicate are used to address them. If the Sustainable Development Goals are to be achieved in Africa, we need to accept informal settlements as part of our cities and recognize that, for all their problems, they are communities rich in physical, social and economic assets. These assets can be harnessed to provide incremental improvements in services and development. So how do we provide incremental energy services and upgrades in dense and seemingly disorganized informal areas? In many cases, it is too expensive or impractical to install the infrastructure for grid electricity. Even when there is funding, legal hurdles or political reservations can leave urban communities in limbo without any energy services for decades. While these obstacles are slowly overcome, more flexible solutions that are quick to install and provide affordable, reliable and safe electricity are required. Off-grid solar home systems have proven enormously successful in rural parts of sub-Saharan Africa. So why can't this technology serve urban citizens living in informal settlements as well? Solar home systems can provide reliable, safe and affordable energy for lighting and other modern energy services. Unlike grid electricity, installation does not require any planning at settlement scale. They are simple to install, run on safe, low voltage power, and they provide immediate opportunities for job creation and basic skills development. Recently, there have been major innovations in the functionality and efficiency of solar home systems, and they are increasingly reliable and affordable. So how can this basic energy technology be rolled out more extensively in Africa's informal settlements to help the continent achieve the Sustainable Development Goals? The following case studies in South Africa and Zimbabwe provide some ideas about the kinds of models that could ensure universal, and sustainable access to basic solar electricity services in informal settlements. The iShack project is a social enterprise established in 2012 to roll out solar home systems in the Nkanini informal settlement in Stellenbosch, South Africa. The project has developed a public-private partnership model for the delivery of affordable solar electricity and over 1,600 households now have access to 50 to 75 watt solar home systems that provides power for lighting, television and cell phone charging. Recognizing energy as a basic necessity for modern life, the poorest households in South Africa are legally entitled to a small monthly subsidy for free basic electricity. However, unelectrified informal settlements can't normally access the subsidy. So, the ISHAC project worked with local government to change policy so that the subsidy could be applied to an off-grid solar service. As a result, Households that sign up for the solar service only have to pay an affordable joining fee and contributions towards ongoing maintenance. The iShack project defines itself as a sustainable energy utility, rather than a once-off provider of hardware. Each household enters a contract with the project, which helps to establish a clear transactional relationship, including holding the project accountable for providing a high-quality service. The priority is to provide a durable electricity supply with well-maintained hardware and batteries. The project trains and employs residents from the community as installation and maintenance agents so that they establish meaningful livelihoods in the green economy. 
With their unique knowledge and understanding of their community, the agents are able to collaborate with the project management team to continually improve the project systems and policies to match the unique context in which they live and work. Thanks to flexible funding terms and delivery targets allowed by the project's funders, the ISHAC project has had freedom to experiment, innovate and adapt. This flexibility has enabled the project to become more resilient and efficient and to eventually surpass original delivery targets and expand into other informal settlements. Although the ISHAC project was initially made possible by a significant capital grant from the South African Green Fund, its comprehensive operating model, coupled with economies of scale and ongoing reductions in hardware costs, now make it possible to expand the service to other sites with only a modest monthly subsidy from local government that would be far lower than the cost of maintaining a grid connection to these sites. Despite the successes of the ISHAC project, there is always room for improvement, especially when the goal is universal access to a high quality basic service at the lowest possible cost. In 2016, a solar home system project was launched in the unelectrified Zivara Sequa extension on the outskirts of Harare. The 480 household settlement is currently being upgraded through a partnership of civil society organizations known as the Zimbabwe SDI Alliance and the city of Harare. Solar home systems are financed by the project on loan basis to women-led savings groups supported by the Alliance partners. Through the work of ZHPF, community members have been mobilized and actively engaged in all stages of project development, including exploring different technology options, energy data profiling, international knowledge exchanges, technical training and managing group savings and loans. The project offers two systems. A 6 watt system powers three lights and cell phone charging and a 200 watt entertainment system which powers a radio, TV or computer as well. In the absence of a government subsidy, the systems are priced with a markup on the unit cost to cover installation and other costs. A higher markup on the 200 watt system cross subsidizing the 6 watt system. Interest free loans to eligible savings group members are funded by a not for profit revolving fund. As households pay back their loans, new loans can be provided to more households. The savings and loan groups hold each other accountable and support each other to ensure that the loans are paid back. This horizontal accountability makes it possible for repayment terms to be more flexible and adaptive to times of financial distress. Approximately a quarter of Divarasekwa has already signed up for the loan scheme and early signs are that the community-orientated approach and peer-mediated loan scheme have been very effective. Monthly repayment rates of 95% have been achieved and no repossessions have yet been necessary. The deliberately flexible, adaptive approach has enabled incremental improvement to the model over time, but there remain some financial and operational challenges. Despite low prices, a lack of government support means that the systems are too expensive for many poor households, and the project is reliant on non-recoverable grants to cover running costs. The Alliance is now replicating the Zivarasekwa model in five other settlements in three Zimbabwean cities. While the community saving structures improve loan repayments, community buy-in and collaboration, there are still opportunities to improve operations to provide a more sustainable universal energy service.
Historically, the rollout of solar home systems has focused on rural areas, driven either by commercial ventures or government programs. Large state contracts for the supply and installation of hardware can crowd out positive competitive elements that drive growth, innovation and entrepreneurship at a local level. On the other hand, purely commercial ventures are often unaffordable for the poorest households. Case studies from South Africa and Zimbabwe provide examples of how the energy needs of the urban poor can be met by initiatives that are neither exclusively public nor private sector led. Their focus on affordability of services instead of profits has allowed them to achieve positive impacts on the lives of informal settlement dwellers without the lengthy delays associated with the extension of grid electricity. The iShack project combines state funding with user fees to create a self-sustaining model of high-quality energy service delivery that is ready for replication, but could benefit from stronger mechanisms for engaging with the wider community. On the other hand, the approach adopted in the Zivarasekwa project shows how community structures can be leveraged to build social capital, reduce some of the financial and political risks of working in informal settlements, and save operational costs by harnessing informal social and community networks. There are potential synergies in these two models. Partnerships with well-established community-based organizations might help social enterprises such as the iShack project to spread technical literacy, establish horizontally accountable user groups that improve payment compliance, provide a legitimate platform for engaging with the wider community and capacitate the community to contest for state support. While there is no perfect model, combining strong operational systems with community structures in innovative ways could further enhance the sustainability and scalability of affordable modern energy services for Africa's poor.